Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we are gonna focus on the Outrun. This is the spare that I have here. If you guys haven't seen, I put an out of order sign on it. But this is a Turbo Outrun that I got from Mike over at NEACF. And between all the boards, I have like two Turbo boards and now I have four Outrun boards. Um, I'm determined to get this thing to work. You know, if I can't get it to work today, I'm basically gonna shotgun a few parts in there, do some swaps. I have a new board that I just got from eBay. So you guys don't want to miss this episode. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, guys, welcome back. So in this episode, we are going to just mess around with the outrun. Um, I've been super busy with work and everything, but I have been working on stuff. I haven't been filming it, um, you know, to post, but I have been filming it on the side. Chunks here and there. So what you're about to see is actually probably a week's worth of stuff where I just kept tackling it every day. Then I'm like, oh, let me try something else. I ordered some parts. I'm still waiting for parts to come in, as a matter of fact. So um, hopefully you'll just enjoy it. So let's just jump right in it and see if we can do some board swaps. All right, guys, so we're back. I actually have a quick little update here. Um, so this is the outrun you guys have been know I've been working on for a while. Um, and you can see here, I'll actually dim the lights a little bit so you can see a little better. Um, you can see the road, the texture maps are gone. Um, when I first got this outrun, I actually paid, I think, 200 bucks for it. Um, there was something wrong with the, with the glitching. I mean, it was glitching out. The whole game was glitching out, so it looked really horrible. However, there was sound, so I did hear the music and the road sounds. It was kind of just kind of playing blind, just all glitched out. So, you know, I took the thing apart. I tested out the EPROMs, took them all out, tested them. I found a few that were bad. Um, replaced them and there was one chip I'm not sure if it was in all the way or something and I turned it on and ever since then the sound kind of went out so I'm not sure if it was that chip I had three other boards that I uh, had that chip on I swapped it out still didn't make any difference so um, you know just kind of let it sit for a while but luckily let me actually head over here so you can see so basically this right here is something I ordered on eBay so it's a package it says fragile all over it and it actually is a, an outrun pcb it was listed as untested so you know i doubt we're gonna get lucky i mean i haven't had good luck so far we're trying to pop them in but let's go ahead and swap this out see if it makes any difference and uh if not you know it's gonna be a really short video just to see if it works i'm really dying to uh, test this out this actually came yesterday i was just so busy i couldn't open it uh so you know i'm gonna film it We'll actually pop it in and then uh, we'll turn it on together and see what happens. So uh, I usually have a, uh, I actually bought an unboxing knife <laughs> and uh, it's a Donkey Kong knife. It looks just like this, but it has Donkey Kong over here and um, I can't find it. I just totally, I haven't unboxed anything in a while. Um, so this knife is good because it's a little dull. So if I accidentally do this, it's not going to cut me or anything. Uh, so it's actually a really good unboxing knife. So, let's see if we can grab this, take it out. Okay. Gonna toss this to the side. And let's knock this out. Everybody's saying on camera, oh, that does look kind of sharp, but it's not. <laughs> I'm just using the points to kind of get in there. So it was packed okay. I mean, I guess it could have been packed a little better. I said fragile on the box. I'm always nervous to do that because the postman will usually say, oh, it's fragile, great, and they'll drop it. But it does smell, oh God, it smells like cigarettes. <laughs> I can't take cigarettes. It's my one thing that I uh, never did as a kid, never smoked. Oh yeah, it smells like, oh God. How did they pack this thing? Oh, so they don't have the mounts, it looks like. All right, well, it could have been packed a little better, whatever. I got it for, I think it was like 50 bucks or something. Yeah, it does smell like cigarette. And kind of looks like nicotine's on it everywhere too. Uh, but I'm just giving it a quick inspection. So it looks like, here, let me get this out of here. Toss that out before it stinks up the house. Um, so you have the two processors here. You have all the EPROM chips, they look complete. 
Um, yeah, and by the way, this is the chip that I was talking about earlier that I actually found hanging off the side. Um, I'm not sure if I took it out and put it in wrong, but ever since then it didn't work. I don't know if that's to blame or if it's because of the FROMs or what, but um, yeah, this looks like it was just dirty. Um, I wonder if I should pop off. Yeah, it's not screwed in. Let's just pop it off real quick. Let's give it a quick inspection, make sure everything is there. So I'm going to look underneath. There's no work done to this board. All right. And then all the EPROMs are complete. And this is the hardest part to do. If you're converting a turbo outrun to a regular outrun, these chips right here, you can't get anymore. They're actually 28 pins and they're one megabyte chips. And these are PROMs, which I believe are factory from Sega, so you can't get these anymore. So replacing these is almost impossible because they only have 32 pin one megabyte chips. And if you try, you know, you can actually overhang the legs. Like if this was over here on this end, you can overhang the legs and not use those and kind of solder them together so that it will work. But they're so tightly knit that you can hang them off. I think these are pin ones. You can hang them off this way. They would hang off there just fine. But then these, you can't hang over this because it would interfere. And you can't stack them either. I was thinking of maybe having risers on each one, like staircase. Uh, you can't do that either because this here kind of sandwiches on top and it's too high for it to pop, plop on there. So um, the only thing you can do, there's a lot of unused stuff. And you can actually put 512K chips everywhere and figure out which legs go to what. And I think on the back here, you would actually solder those two points together to kind of fool it into... You know, you'd burn half the ROM onto one and then the other. So I think there's some discussion on Clav on how to do that. And we're trying to map it out and we can't figure it out. So at this point, the project kind of just halted right there. Um, this here looks like it's a little rusted. It's a lot of rust here. It wasn't really well taken care of. I'm sure they looked at it and said, oh, it's a not run board. Not sure if it's working or not. Probably could use new caps everywhere. Um, but you know, it might be a part board, who knows? Maybe I can switch out all these chips here with ones that are good. Um, but we'll see. So, so far so good. This video board looks like it's okay. I'm going to look in the back real quick. And nothing looks too bad. So let's pop it in and see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, man, this thing is really filthy, man. It's kind of gross. It smells like nicotine. Uh, so let's see pop this on there and what's cool is that let's say the top board is broken I could always just switch it out with another one that I have to see if it works so you know if this doesn't work what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one that I have in there now and switch the top board for the bottom board and I believe you can tell what revision it's on it usually says it on the side I can't remember where it said it Oh, here it is. It says Sega Revision B right here. Sega Outrun. Um, so hopefully, you know, this will correct the problem. So let's go ahead and pop that in there. So we're back in front of the machine. Um, I took it off the tripod. I didn't feel like turning it around in case I have to switch the top board. Um, but I'm dimming the lights a little bit. And let me go ahead and just turn it on. I have a switch over here. And we have sound. That's a really, really good sign. And it looks like it's glitched out. So I'm really happy to see that there's sound. That means um, the sound circuit is working properly. It's probably some EPROMs that are just messed up. So this is actually similar to what happened um, when I bought the machine. 
with the board that was in there before. Still cool to see that uh, everything seems to be working, so let me go ahead and coin this up. Alright, so last wave, passing breeze. Now we go sound tower. Alright, let's just do passing breeze. I'm just gonna hit the start button here. Get ready. Nice. Alright, so the sprite is missing for the car. But it looks like we have some partial road here. Looks like the sprites for the um, palm trees and everything are missing. The sound's working great, though. Let's see if force feedback works here. Yep. Actually, I could see... It's so funny. I could see burn-in. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's like a ghosting there. But that's burn-in from the car. That used to be there on this monitor. From the other board. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> that's so cool. You see that? Yeah, that's the part where it's crazy. It's zigzaggy. Alright. Listen to that. That's music to my ears, literally. That's so cool. Alright guys, let me go ahead and stop this for a second. I'm going to swap batteries and um, see if I can just uh, swap boards and see what happens. Alright guys, we're back for a second. I actually just realized, before I swap the boards, um, I wanted to see what happens when we do the uh, IC test. So, let's go ahead and look at the coin door. So, it should be a test right here. It's the uh, test switch. So I'm going to hit that. Um, it's readable, which is great. It's not entirely correct, but at least I can read it. So I'm going to do a memory test. I believe it's right there. I'm going to hit the start button. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a test switch again. It's been a while. Okay. So right now it's testing all the ICs. These here, it looks a little garbled. That says good. So everything says good, 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 good. All the ICs say good. So it looks like the ICs themselves are fine for the EPROMs. Um, I guess at a later date, <laughs> I could always test the RAM with the um, with the test chips that I burned. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna do a quick swap. Switch out one board for the other, try it. And if that doesn't work, then try the other one that I just switched. So basically, I'm kind of interchanging the boards. But um, yeah, let me hear sound too. Let's go ahead and Get past this test here. I'm gonna go to let's see, motor sound. Okay. So let's do that. So um I'm gonna hit the coin in on the start button here. So that's working fine. We'll go to the next test, which is checkpoint. So far it's good. Signal one. works good. Signal 2, and I believe 13, voice number 4, is always blank for everybody on every board. So that sounds cool. Here's the slip for the car. Cool. Okay. Let's crash. Crash 2. This is rebound. Okay. Voice one. Checkpoint. 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 Voice two. Congratulations. Congratulations. I've never heard that before because I've never gotten to the end. <laughs> Get ready. Get ready. That's the same voice they use in uh, Afterburner, by the way. It's pretty cool. Okay, so four. Voice four is always dead. Um, not really dead, it's just not there on every single board, and that's normal. So there is no voice 13. Let's hear the waves. You hear that when you have the radio screen. Okay. Cheers. It looks like, is it cheers? That's kind of doing a little clicking sound, so that might be messed up. Music 16. Okay. Sounds fine. It's music 2. 
Let's go to Lasso Music 3. All right. So let me go ahead and go to the next menu here. And I guess that's it. So I'm curious to see what the bookkeeping says on there. Service credits, doesn't really tell me anything. Total credits, looks like it says one. Uh, anyway. All right, guys, so let me go ahead and swap this out. I was just curious to see if the sound uh, tests work, and it looks like um, that one test, I think it was like 15, wasn't working right, so we'll see. So let's go ahead and uh, switch it out. Okay, so we're back. So I took my original board uh, that I had in here that didn't have the sound um, and had the missing road and put that on top of the bottom board, which is the video board of the one I just got in the mail, and I actually, flip-flop the other one so we're going to try this now if this doesn't work we're going to switch in the other one but this one has the original board that was in here uh, that had the sound issues and the uh, road mapping issues so let's go ahead and turn it on let me turn this down here so again i hear no sound usually it makes like a little crashing sound when it first starts so this to me i mean it has the road mapping issues that I talked about here. And it also has this, which we saw before. So it looks like something's wrong with the video board on the bottom. So this is looking really good, actually. So I think that the one I'm, gonna, I'm about to switch it to um, with my original board on the bottom, I think my video board was fine. So I'm going to go ahead and take the other one with the video board I already had in here with the new one that I just got on top and hopefully that'll correct everything so fingers crossed we'll have it because everything's missing here the sprites are missing you can actually see the burn-in still from the other one um this glitch on top with the outrun thing um you can see the text is messed up and no sound so i really have a good feeling about this other one so let's go ahead and switch that out and i'll turn it on and let you know how it is so this one that's in there right now is my original bottom board which is the graphics board. And then the top board is the one um, that I got in the mail that was kind of dirty and stuff. So maybe if I clean out the top board, um, it'll help it. So I'm gonna leave this one. It's kind of a slight improvement. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and credit it up. Let's see. We got sound, which is great. And it looks pretty good. Splash wave, let's try that. So splash wave, I'm gonna hit start. Get ready. So it's looking a lot like a real outrun now, finally. So I'm gonna play for a little bit just to hear if the music is good, even though we did the sound test. Oops. Ooh, wow, that's glitching out a little bit. I can't tell what's happening. I'm actually on the water, it looks like, but it's really the road. So I haven't tested the EPROMs on this thing, so I'm not really sure what's going on. So I have all brand new ones, so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to swap them out. I probably won't do that today, but at least we have sound. That's great. can't tell where the road is it's kind of hard yeah so you can see it's totally glitchy oh now it's kind of snapped back into position and you can see the rocks let me actually try to crash here so I can see the texture yep textures look fine on those so it looks like it's still the road is a little screwed up textures look fine on the side here too scaling looks good Okay, great, so I'm just gonna let the time run out. So I guess we'll stop here with this video. Um, it's just a quick update, you know, just to show you guys um, some progress on the board, that's great. I'm really happy that it worked out. 
Oh man, that's like music to my ears. I keep listening to it. All right, guys, so I was about to wrap up that episode, but then I decided, let me try something else. So <laughs> let's see what I did right here real quick. All right, guys, so we're back. So I have my trusty GQ4X burner here. It's a programmer. Uh, I really recommend this one. It's burned everything I've thrown at it. Um, you can get a power adapter. It doesn't come with it, but you can get a separate power adapter that you just plug in here. Um, this goes for about 100 bucks, and then the power adapter I got on eBay for like, I don't know, $7 or something like that. Um, you rarely need the adapter. In this case, for these chips, this is M27C512s. Uh, uh, you do not need the power for that. The power you need for like older games like Galaga, Galaxian, Pac-Man, stuff like that. Um, but um, it does work great otherwise. Um, I would say just try it, see if it burns it. If it doesn't, you can always erase it again and then just stick in the power adapter later. Uh, so let me go ahead and stick my chip in here. You kind of just insert it. It's going to tell you which way to insert it in the program with the notch going up and then you put the last pin on the bottom here. So what? actually that's, is that upside down? No, that's the right way. So I hold it down and I press it down and now it doesn't come out. So that's ready to program. And I'm going to go ahead and open my software. So right now the software just initializes um, when you first turn it on, it detects it, it looks for the most recent firmware because they do do updates to it. That's what I really like about using the modern ones. If you have issues, you can submit a report. If you have any um, chips that are new that aren't on the list, you can always just uh, do that. So anyway, let me go ahead and zoom in on this. That way you guys can get a better look. Um, I'm actually gonna pull up the website where you can grab everything and um, we can go ahead and burn these four test ROMs so that we can test the memory a little better. All right, guys, so we're at the website. This is actually where you can download the OutRun memory test. There was a guy who wrote it. Um, so basically, you go on here, and it kind of tests the RAM faults because the built-in memory test on the OutRun um, board set kind of stinks. <laughs> Doesn't really get everything in detail. Uh, this one will actually test the RAM, and um, it actually has indicators, too, if you don't have a monitor. Um, the I believe the start button will flash when it's good, and then the brake lamp will flash um, when it's bad. If you don't have a brake lamp, you could actually hook one up uh, to the board to make kind of like a crude system. Uh, but anyway, I have a monitor, so everything's working fine. Um, but you know, if you don't, if you don't have anything on there where you can't see anything, you can actually hook it up so you can diagnose it properly. But in my case, I just figured someone told me about this. Uh, big shout out goes to Mike, by the way. He's the guy who sold me the machine and he uh, linked me to this. Um, so anyway, you can download it here. So I went ahead and downloaded, you know, the uh, the modified ROM that he wrote uh, for this, which tests all these uh, the CPU board and the video board RAM, and it has all the ICs listed there. So that's a good reference point. So the files are here. So there's four of them. Um, he includes both of them for Outrun or Turbo Outrun. In this case, we're just going to do Outrun just to test it out. So it looks like IC58, IC76, IC118, and IC133 are the ones that we need. Uh, so I did download a detailed, let me see if it's here. Yeah, this is it. This is a detailed um, board set that I found online. It's like super detailed where you can zoom in. Um, and it looks like it's these four chips right here. It says IC58, IC76. IC118 and IC133. So if you guys need to see where they are on your board, you basically have the two CPU chips here and right below it, these four right here on the top. Those are the ones that you wanna kinda take out and then replace with these chips we're about to burn. So let's go ahead and close that. We'll close this as well. We'll open up the software. Actually, I have two instances open, there we go. Let's make that full screen. Okay, so um, you're gonna go to the load and you're, gonna, you're basically just going to, in this case I went to, I believe it's, is it under? Yeah, it's under my download section. And I have all my other ROMs and basically my outrun mem test. There it is, ROMs, outrun. And it's not gonna show up at first because you have to select all files on the bottom. You'll see it pop up. So we're gonna go ahead and burn them in order. Um, I'm gonna burn actually in numerical order. So I'm gonna take this one right here, which is IC58. You hit okay. It's actually exceeding the device because I forgot to change my device. So it was uh, for a smaller chip. So what I'm gonna do is go to 
uh, all, I believe the brand on this. Yeah, these are STs. So let's go ahead. And ST has been the best brand that I really trust. Um, I've always never really had any issues with that. They've always burned properly. So there's 27C, 512 right here. So that's what we need. We hit select and it changes the device. You'll see this right here, change. Okay, change to the bigger chip. Tells you how to put it in and it says no adapter required. And it also um, doesn't need any external power. The last chip I used, I was burning M2732's needed power. That's why you see that red there. And there is a way to clear it. So let's go ahead and, oops, I'm gonna select it again just to show you how it looks when it first initializes. So it says ST, uh, let's see, 27C512, here it is. Hit select and it checks it and updates the firmware and it says, okay, so it doesn't need the adapter for that um, or the power supply. So I already stuck the chip in. So now next thing you do is I usually click on the buffer tab Right now it just has some data in there from the last thing I loaded. So I'm gonna hit um, read. It's gonna read from the chip and it should write all Fs in there because it's reading blank. All Fs means blank. Okay, it looks like it's good. These chips take a little longer compared to the other ones I was doing in the other video because these are bigger chips. They're 512 kilobytes. So now I'm gonna hit blank check, just double check. I always like just seeing it myself. That's why I always hit read. So it looks like it's blank checking and it's gonna say this chip is blank, so we're good, okay. So now let's go ahead and load the 58. I believe that's the first one, just to double check. I'm gonna hit all files. Yep, 58's the first one. You hit okay, and now you'll see it change. So that's the code that's loaded. And then uh, that's when you just hit write. So I'm writing it on there. And when it's done writing, it's gonna verify as well. So I'm gonna start making the labels in the meantime. And this labeler, I'll have a link in the description as well. This is really cool. It's like 20 bucks, 20 something dollars uh, on Amazon. And it comes with a um, tape already in there so you can use it, it lasts a long time. Um, I've since gotten a refill because I've had this a while, but this thing is really awesome. This uh, Brother P-Touch. So that one's burned, looks like it's good to go. I usually hit verify one more time just to be safe. Okay, and that's it. So this one's burned. Um, I'm gonna name it, let's see, what should we name it here? Uh, let's just put uh, test ROM IC. 58. I'm going to hit, uh, actually I'm just going to print it right now. Okay. So this is it. Test ROM IC58. I'm going to go ahead and put it on this. Oops. I just hit the camera. Sorry about that. And I'm going to put the next one in. So I'm just going to take it, kind of just pop it in there just like the diagram shows. I usually hold it down so it doesn't fall out and then it's good to go. It's nice and firm. So I'm going to hit read again. You'll see it turn blank with F's. I'm going to hit blank check one last time just to be safe. And now we're just gonna hit load. And it defaults to 58 as the file type because that's what we selected. So you gotta select all again. And now I'm gonna select 76, which is the next one up. It changed the data so I know it's in there. Now I'm just gonna hit write and it's gonna totally write it. So in the meantime, I can go back to my labeler and change it to 76. I'm gonna hit print. I'm printing out the label for that. And the reason you, you need to label it, you could always use black tape if you want to. A, it keeps track of it, so it's nice and neat like that. And B, it will cover the window. 
because this still can get erased if it's exposed to UV light. So that label kind of covers it up so it doesn't do that. All right, so that's good. I hit verify one more time just to be safe. Okay, I'm gonna take this one out, put it next to the label I just made, stick the new one in, press down, okay, it's good to go. I'm gonna hit read. Okay, now blank check. Okay, now I'm gonna hit load, and I'm going to load all files. And the next one down would be 118. I'm going again in numerical order. So I can see the data changed in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and write. Now it's verifying it. And again, I'm gonna hit verify again. So you could burn anything. Once you know all these basic steps, it's really simple to burn stuff. And it's cheap. These chips are super, super cheap. Um, okay, so that one's done. Now I'm gonna change it to, what was that, 118. So I'm gonna go here to my labeler, change the last part to 118. Print. Take the chip out. Okay, that one's ready to be labeled. And then this last one here, I'm gonna stick in. And let's go ahead and read it. You'll see it get blank. Yep, it's totally blank. Let's see here. Let's go to blank check. And of course, we're going to load the file in. You're going to select all files so it pops up again. 133 is the last one. Hit OK. Everything popped up. That looks good. I'm going to hit write. Now it's verifying, and of course, when it's done, I'm gonna verify one more time. You don't have to do that. I just do it. I'd rather have it fail here than when it's in the machine. And when it's verifying, it's actually comparing it to the actual file I loaded versus what's actually on the chip. So it reads the chip and it compares it to this, what's here, so that it looks like it passed. So we're good to go. So let me go ahead and, oops, I forgot. You know what, I forgot what that one was supposed to be called. So let's go ahead and you can always open up your program again and it'll load the last file that you used. So that's how I'm gonna find out what number it is. I just can't remember, there it is, 133. So let me go ahead and type 133. I'm gonna print it. And I can close it. Okay, so we have all four burnt. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and label this and then I can show you the chips and we're gonna see if we can pop it in there into the board set. And like I said, again, I'll just uh, review really quick. It's these four chips here. So if you zoom in slightly, it's the ones right next to the CPU. So you have the two CPUs here, and then you have one, two, three, and four. So these four chips right here is what we're gonna kind of take out and then replace it with these. Turn it on, it'll run all the tests and we can kind of figure out what ICs are incorrect. We'll write them down and then we'll replace them. So hopefully it will find something. I'm really hoping it will. All right, guys, so here are the ROMs. I just labeled them up. We have test ROM 58, 76, 118, and 133. It's just those four chips. So let's go ahead and swap those out on the PCB and we'll fire it up and see what happens.
All right, guys, so we're back. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Power switch here. Let's see what comes up on the screen. So right now the start button is flashing and it looks like it's working. So it's testing everything like it should. So far everything's okay. It restarts. It's actually hoping to find something uh, not working right. <laughs> yeah, all the road is, uh, looks like it's testing okay. Not sure why it's doing that or if it's supposed to. So IC 130, 115. Yeah, so it just keeps testing it over and over. So everything looks good. Um, I know there's a watchdog circuit you can disable with a jumper. Um, if it encounters errors, it tends to restart um, suddenly, but I'm guessing this one looks like it's counting down to restart. So all the RAM is okay on this thing. So I wonder what happens if you go into test mode while this is running. Let's find out. Oh, apparently nothing. not really sure why it's doing that okay so it looks good to me so I'm really baffled here I'm not sure why the sounds not working and uh, you know I guess this is a good thing right everything's working like it should but I'm not really sure you see that there if you guys have any comments I'm gonna actually maybe I'll post this on the forums I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that in test mode so I'll just send a quick little post and I'll let you know. All right guys, so we're back. So what I did was I did pop in the test ROMs you could see here. You know, these are the test ROMs that I had in the other board. This is a really filthy board that I just received uh, from eBay. It was like 50 bucks or whatnot. Um, so I noticed when I pulled it out, like these legs, you can see they're like super dirty. So the board's really, really dirty. Um, it's very possible that the ROMs just need to be all swapped out. Maybe I'll do that uh, later. But for now, I just wanted to test uh, some of the EPROMs. Um, and it looks like some of them fail because this actually goes through it and does all the tests and everything. Um, and it doesn't complete. So I'll show you exactly what it does. I actually turned it on. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me see where did I put the... Uh, oh, here it is. I actually have one of these remotes. They're awesome. So I'm going to turn it on with that. Let's see. Okay, so what happens is, let me lower this. You see that? It's failing some RAM tests, so it's just trying to freak out and reboot. It's probably the watchdog taking effect. You can see this flashing here. Each time it flashes, when there's no display, it's actually saying the ROM is good. Uh, and all of a sudden you'll see it like kind of stop flashing for a second and it's acting weird so something's wrong with this board definitely uh, the bottom board is the one i had before and the top board is the one i got in the mail and it doesn't look like it's really doing anything good so most likely it probably needs a scrubbing <laughs> i need to take the um eproms out and uh give them a good scrubbing maybe do a um asbestos pan on the legs and stuff like that uh, so for now, what I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to try swapping out the chips on top with the EPROMs that I have here and see if it does anything. So right now, again, see it's rebooting. It'll start the tests and then boom, it'll fail. Let's see. So all the road tests are fine. Sprites. See, now it seems to be behaving okay. So I wonder if it, after it heats up a little bit or after it warms up, starts acting weird like that so now it's rebooting and it's doing the test again so right now it seems to be passing everything so it's still acting a little strange so i'm going to go ahead i mean this board again if we look at it it's super filthy so what i'm probably going to do um I'm, i might remove these roms right here swap them out and see if that does anything 
I did order some chips, by the way. I ordered, um, I believe this section over here, this is uh, the sound section. I actually ordered some of these chips here so I can replace them. I'm gonna shotgun it on the other board and hopefully that'll repair it. Um, also, I'm gonna try piggybacking stuff where I have some extra RAM and I'm just gonna start piggybacking them on here to see if that corrects the problem. Um, you know, I did um, order, I guess, a, uh, a probe. So I'm gonna start learning all that engineering stuff. It's really interesting to me, you know, with the gates that are off and on and all that stuff. So hopefully I'll learn something. Uh, but for now, let me go ahead and see if I can uh, swap this out and get things working. All right, guys, so I switched everything out. Uh, I left all the RAM, obviously, because that's all soldered in. Um, but all the EPROMs, I actually took them out. They were in horrible, horrible shape. Uh, some of the legs were broken on them. Um, it was very rusted, you know, over here. This is a CPU, obviously, but like over here, it was just all messed up. And this one, um, the socket might be bad. Uh, what I ended up doing is I took a 32 pin socket. You can see it overhanging here. Um, I just put that on top of it so it would fit in because it kept bending the legs on these. Um, so I just put the socket in there and it fit good. And then I put that on top, so it should be fine. Those legs aren't touching anything, so it's fine. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. First thing I do, I make sure it's powered up. It's not smoking. It's not doing anything weird. And actually it seems to be pretty improved. I think that's how it was before too. Okay. Well, to be honest, I mean, um, let me see if I can credit it up. Still, if it has sound or not. Yeah, now I'm not getting any sound. <laughs> this thing is super temperamental. Yeah, so this thing is acting way weird. So that works. All right, so if anything, it's getting worse. So that board looks like, yeah, there it goes. It's crapping out a little bit. It's also trying to put in credits. It's resetting. It's just acting very weird. So that board, I wouldn't say it's hosed, um, but it probably has to be a couple sockets probably need to be changed on it. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop my original board in there with the EPROMs that I had on there. Um, it was a nice and clean board. And then I'll just wait for those other chips to come in. All right, guys, so while I was at it, I figured why not, you know, when I'm switching them back to my original board, I figured let me go ahead and double check my work. So I'm actually taking my original things here. So this is the OPR10188, for example. So I'm gonna pop that in my programmer and the way you verify chips, I figured I'd just go over it while I was at it. Um, you can actually just load the same one. So in this case, OPR10188, I'm gonna go ahead and load that. So theoretically, if I hit verify, it's actually gonna take the chip and it's gonna verify it against the file I just loaded. So in this case, it's 10188. So let me go ahead and hit verify. And it kind of just compares it. And if it goes all the way to 100%, you're good. So there's no errors. It says device is verified. Great. So now I can take that one out. Now, for example, if I put another one in there, I'm going to put 10189 in there. And I'm not going to change the file. I'm going to show you what happens when it doesn't line up. So let me hit verify. So it'll say verify failed address and it'll tell you where it starts. So that's what happens when you don't load the right file and it's a bad chip. So if you have an original chip and you want to test it, that's how you do it. You pop it out of the board, you put it in the programmer, you load um, the original ROM. I usually get the ROM from MAME. Um, it's usually numbered correctly, and then I'll just load it into the memory and I'll verify it. And if it fails, then I know it's a bad chip. So that's how you test chips on a programmer. So let me go ahead and load this one here. Okay. So I'm gonna look here, so Looks like it's OPR10189, so 10189 is right here. I'm gonna load it into memory. 
I'm going to hit verify. And it looks like this one's fine. Let me let it get to 100%. And that's it. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm actually going to put the chips back in the original board. But I figured since I have them out, I might as well test them all again. Uh, just to make sure that that wasn't the issue with the original board when I had it in there. So let me go ahead and do this and we'll come back. Okay, it's not over yet. <laughs> I'm not going to give up that easy. So what ended up happening is uh, later on I decided, you know what, you know, this board swap thing, it actually wasn't too bad. I could tell what's working and what's not. I'm really surprised I got sound out of that eBay thing. That thing was really cruddy and dirty. Um, and a big shout out to Arcade Jason. I mean, he um, kind of had this little thing on how to clean sockets and to remove corrosion. So I'm just gonna douse the whole board in that stuff that he recommended and then clean it off like within you know a few seconds and see you know if that does anything. I can't get any worse because that board's really cruddy. Um, and hopefully that'll kind of solve some of the problems. I'm gonna burn new EPROMs for it. I already have them. I ordered all the parts. Um, and you know, I've, that's one thing I've been really good at. You know, the, every cloud has a silver lining, right? But is burning EPROMs. I'm super good at it now. At first, I remember being a beginner. If you have any questions on that, I have posted videos on that. If you want to see more on that, you can leave it in the comments. I can do that. It's super easy to do. Don't be intimidated. It's about a hundred bucks or so for the burner. I'll put a link in the description as well, but it is just a great thing to do. And I'm really glad I invested in it. It totally paid for itself. Um, but now I've kind of reached the limit on that. So I'm going to go ahead and try to, um, you know, shotgun some parts, which you'll see in this clip here where I just kind of piggyback them on top of each other. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I've seen it work in videos. Um, I've checked out YouTube videos on repair for outrun boards. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. So I'm gonna try piggybacking the Yamaha chip, see if that works. I totally don't know what I'm doing with that, but um, I figured I had the extra parts and uh, you know, and people have done it online. Um, I'm not gonna do it while it's hot, while it's live. So what I'm gonna do is just tape it in place. Just, it's just a little safer. So go ahead and check out this footage that I took. Okay, so these are the chips that I ordered. I basically uh, got them from China. You can get it um, really cheap on eBay. There's tons of parts. So I started looking up the parts on the boards uh, that have to do with the audio. And uh, these were the chips that came up. I don't know, I can't remember if these are RAM. I have to actually look at the model numbers. And this actually looks at the Yamaha YM2151 chip. I ordered two of them just in case because I have multiple boards, so I figured why not. Um, I believe this one is, this one is soldered in. So what I'm gonna try doing is there's a technique that works a lot with these boards where you piggyback them on top of the other chip. Um, people do it when it's on because they're really good at it. I've seen people repairing them and stuff. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna piggyback it and put a piece of electric tape over it just to hold it in place. I'm gonna turn it on and see if we have sound. So I'm just gonna shotgun it for now. Um, I did order a probe on Amazon um, just to kind of, uh, you know, look at the schematics because I'm learning that and big shout out goes to Adam uh, Over at one circuit because he has some awesome tutorials on that on circuits So and schematics and how to read them. So let me go ahead and uh, set this up and we'll get back to it Okay guys, so it doesn't look pretty. It's very crude, but I basically took the Yamaha Synthesis chip and I piggybacked it where I stuck it over there held it in place with yellow electrical tape and we're gonna turn it on to see if that corrects the problem. And if it does, all we have to do is unsolder the original chip and put that one in there, and then it should work. I also got the RAM that's next to it that actually, it's, uh, I believe it's this one right here that I just covered, but I have that RAM as well, so if this doesn't work, I'll piggyback it as well with the other one and see if that corrects the problem. So let's give it a shot. Let's see if we turn it on. And so far, no issues. Everything seems to be lit up over here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, credit it up. Okay, so far, no sound. So just for, just for shits, I'm just gonna press against it. And that doesn't seem to be doing anything. So, uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. It's definitely not that chip. I do that because I don't want to unsolder it. Um, and I'm going to try the RAM next for it. And I did order some other RAM, I believe. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I did order uh, these long RAM chips here. And I'm going to try piggy piggybacking those um, just to see if that corrects the problem. 
So again, here, let me light it up here. So these RAM chips right here, these long ones, a little expensive, but um, I think they're coming from Israel. I got them on eBay and they're coming worldwide, but the shipping was cheap and it wasn't too bad. So I got one or two of those, that way I can start piggybacking and troubleshooting those. Or uh, once I get that logic probe, I can start probing them to see which one is bad, if any are bad, but there's a whole bunch of them all over the board. So I figured, um, I think I ordered a couple, maybe three or four, I'm not sure. And that's it. So uh, let me go ahead and remove that and I'm gonna see if I can piggyback this one over here. Okay guys, so I did it again. I removed the other one and I just put the RAM chip, which is right here. I piggybacked it. Uh, I think, don't quote me, it's the YM3012, uh, which is part of the audio circuit here from what I read uh, online. So I just popped it on there, um, piggybacked, and we'll see if this takes care of the problem. So here we go. So seems to be behaving the same, usually it has like the uh, car sound. So let me go ahead and put a credit in. Yeah, it's still behaving the same way. Okay, well, it's good to know I have spare chips now. <laughs> so, all right guys, so at this point, I'm gonna wait for more stuff to come in the mail. Um, I guess I'll end the video on this note. Um, but um, yeah, like I guess let's uh, set this up and close up the video. All right, guys, that about does it for this video. I mean, I'm trying things little by little. You know, this isn't, you know, a failure by any means. I think it's really successful because I learn stuff and I love to learn. So hopefully that logic probe <clears throat> should get here in time um, for me to just start learning it. And then once I start experimenting on my own, I'll kind of share with you guys what I've learned and I'm sure I'm going to solve it. I'm sure they, these between all these outrun boards, I'm sure I'm going to get one or two out of them, maybe three. Um, but I'm determined to get this thing to work. Um, so that about does it. So if you guys have any questions, just please leave it in the comments. If you have any suggestions, if you guys have outruns yourselves or you know someone, um, I'm looking just as a backup because I'm trying to repair it myself, but I'm looking for a U.S. guy. I think Ian, um, who also has an outrun, kind of suggested a guy that he, he sent his board to for like 100 bucks or so. Um, there's a guy that's really good. Uh, he's in the U.K. I can't recall uh, his YouTube channel. I'll link that in the description, but he has a lot of really good tutorials on how he fixes stuff. Um, he really mostly shows it working though and he shows what fixed it and he kind of explains what fixed it So it's kind of clues and I'm kind of soaking that in um, But I really got to pick his brain a little bit um, on how to fix them um, as a last resort I mean, he's the best he does so many outruns. He like specializes in that I may just ship them to him <laughs> Once I get one working at least and then ship the rest of him It might be worth it to um, keep a spare for myself and then put the other one in the other other outrun and then you know the spare one and then just sell it um because those boards go for a lot of money i've seen them go up to like 400 bucks each um on ebay uh so you know that's in working condition so hopefully you know i can uh and i don't list them as untested i think that's totally wrong that people do that i'm just gonna be like look dude i tried fixing it i'll list exactly what's wrong with it and who knows maybe someone out there go oh that's an easy fix i can fix that but for me i'm kind of a novice but for now, I'm keeping all of them. I'm going to try to get one to work, and hopefully you can do this together and you guys can learn something. There really is not much on the internet or YouTube about um, repairing outruns, so I'm trying to fix that. I created a, a thing that I'll link in the description as well with Clav. I, I asked so many questions about PROMs, about EPROMs, about the mask ROMs that, that's in there, so hopefully we'll all learn together. All right, I'm rambling on, so I'm just going to end this video. Uh, thanks again for subscribing, for liking it, for commenting. I listen to everybody, you know, and I really enjoy the hobby and that's really what it's about. It's not really about, you know, making YouTube, whatever. I love subscribers because I love teaching people, but it's not about the money, guys. It's all about fun. So hopefully you guys will get that. You'll pass it on to your friends and um, like the video, I guess. And if you want to have any questions besides comments, you can always go to Twitter if you have a Twitter account. Um, it's at Dell's Arcade. That's at D-E-L-S Arcade. So again, hit like, hit subscribe, do all the normal stuff, hit the bell, all that good stuff to get subscribed and to get notified whenever I do live stuff, which is coming in the future, as you saw with the drop that I'm working on. And that's about it. So until next time, I guess, take care.